This video is sponsored by Factor. More on them after the reaction. Citizens of the Reject Nation, it is time to watch the most compelling version of Star Wars to have ever graced the Silver Streams, the Bad Batch. Why are you hating on the Bad Batch right now? Hating on the Bad Batch. You're hating on the Bad Batch. We really liked, I would say, one and three. Loved one and three. Yeah, two was. An episode of television. Apparently, we didn't like it because it's slow. Because the other two were high octane, <laughs> fast paced entertainment, apparently. Anyway, use the force to leave a like. Also, subscribe and click that and notification don't bell. Don't forget to hit the button with the ring. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Tell Prepper. Good job. Thank Pre you to all. Prepper or Record? Prepper. That's a nice. I got to get through the intro, Michael. Because the full length reaction watch along where we sync up with your own copy of Bad Batch is available for our super sexies over at our Patreon page. Over there, we cover some things, seriously, the highlights and watch songs. Good. Thank you all for joining. Seriously, you guys rock. Por favor, open thank us. The other to the portas. Yes, I do speak Armenian as well. <laughs> Let's get to it. God, Craig. <laughs> Patch. Give me that title. Let's do it. A different approach. What could that imply? The ship sustained heavy damage. I can see that. Get the stabilizers online. I'm so glad that they saved the dog. I know. Save the dog. The last book on screenwriting you'll ever need. We have to land. It's a little hard to do when nothing's working. What <clears throat> planet is that? Based on the atmosphere, it looks a little bit like Dantooine. Hmm, doubt it. Not Dantooine. That's very spiky. They should keep most of the season just Omega and Crosshair. I don't disagree. Look how beautiful this looks. Yeah. Actually, the field does kind of remind me of like Dantooine in the original 2003 oh, Clone Dantooine. Wars. Dantooine. Dantooine, not Tatooine. They said Tatooine, yeah. Racist. <laughs> Nah, it's probably a new planet. This will take forever to repair. No, there's no time for that. It would appear to be cold. To get the nav reader online to extract the coordinates to Tantus for when we go back. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's excessive mouth breath. <laughs> They're not going back. We left the other prisoners behind. The Empire is going to be searching for this ship and us. I love the attention to detail. Cold. I like to think it's not that cold, <laughs> but that their breath is really bad. <laughs> Live action usually misses that detail. So I like that. Can't a spaceport a few clicks east. We'll start there. It's funny because it wasn't as potent as it was when Crosshair was in the actual frozen tundra. That's true. I will never get sick of seeing Mount Tantus. So some crazy theory is that his body is used to make Snoke. I mean, I think they say, like, Nala Say kind of looks like a Snoke. And maybe the two of them have love. Get it on, yeah. I never understood your attachment to the young clone, that all the samples you've taken from Omega never yielded results, yet one tested by Emery indicated a positive M-count transfer. Ruh -roh. That result is nothing but an aberration, like the clone herself. The voice acting is really wonderful. There's more emotion. We shall see. Once Omega's brought back, the tests of validity will be confirmed. Your future, however, is less certain. I'm really concerned she's going to die this show. Yeah, it's hard to imagine her making it out. I've really come to care about her. Which is really wonderful that an otherwise throwaway character has found her way into your heart. Yes. Who knew Greg had feelings? I sometimes do. Look at these, like, cool, like... Urban stormtroopers. I'm here for it. It's like putting fabric on stormtrooper armor. It just always gives it more life. Yeah. So let's find a way to send a message to Hunter and Wrecker. We can't. They monitor long range comms. It'll give us away. I'll have to figure out something else. A different approach, you say? We can't walk around like this. We'll draw too much attention. You're the one who wanted to bring no. the hound. Don't listen to him. Come on. I love that, that that's D. Bradley Baker. <laughs> I know, right? I forgot that. That mouth breath is really strong. It's like e-cigarette puffs. Space fake. Clouds. Death <laughs> sticks. <laughs> Death sticks. 
Like, why do you need goggles on top of your armor? I have questions. Isn't this better? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like reference to Han and Luke and Plus Strikes Back. New plan. Let's get to the spaceport. A, A different, different, approach? different approach. How many different approaches are going to be in this sh this episode? Four. They just make for a really compelling uh, duo. These two. And I, I love just, what? even when they're not talking, just like the body language of, of these two. It is a really fun dynamic. Too well guarded. We'll never slip past all those troopers undetected. I can take out at least half before they know what's happening. Different, different approach. Or we could try a way that doesn't involve blaster fire. Like what? I played the cumin beat. I'm the king of a rumba beat. We'd like two tickets on the next shuttle, please. Chain code. Oh, the chain codes. No chain codes, no passage. Problem for us could be an opportunity for you. Oh. You knew of an alternate way of booking passage without a chain code? Uh. Are you insinuating that I should take a bribe. Yes. And that could be arranged for 15,000 credits. For two tickets? Per ticket. Per ticket. Actually, that is a solid deal. Don't <laughs> come back without the credit. D. Bradley Baker probably voiced her. Dave Filoni single-handedly keeping D. Bradley Baker and his family fed. <laughs> <laughs> Storming the spaceport would be easier than finding 30,000 credits. One's less risky for your life. Every second we're here, we're at risk. Then quit wasting time complaining. I mean, to get the 30,000 credits, you'd probably have to hurt someone. Or gamble. I think I know how we can make some fast credits. Texas hold them. If this is how they introduce Omega using the force. I don't think people, this people really don't you want to hustle someone. I think Omega is going to be force sensitive. I prefer to think of it as a temporary requisition of funds. And bet with what? We don't have anything. They what? don't do that. Oh. And if you lose? Well, I guess we'll be in more trouble. Take a different, different approach. Who's next? I'll give it a try. This is the episode. It shouldn't take long. Because you're small. I'm getting crushed here. How about one more game? My luck has to run out eventually. Uh, that's true. <laughs> but I get to deal this time. <laughs> it's true. She makes a good point. Her luck should run out. That's the one I'm losing against. my least favorite. Oh, gambling's illegal. No, it's not. Business looks good today. A newcomer has pulled in quite the crowd. Drawing attention. <laughs> not again. Oh, okay, okay. One more game. I think I'll quit while I'm ahead. Leaving so soon, you're in my seat. <laughs> oh, damn. There's like inglorious bastards. That's exactly what it is. Space Nazis. <laughs> you think you're good at this game? Want to try against a uh, real opponent? Where did all these douchebag Imperial officers come from? There's just so many of them. Were they all just in reserve in the Clone Wars? They're fanatics. They're the ones who really believe in the cause. You know, certain people rise in political power, and then they're like, yeah, I can finally be my true self. I mean, he does have the hair of a fascist, that's for sure. I've seen you or your dad around before. We're just passing through. <sighs> You're not bad, but you seem to have misunderstood your enemy. Did I? I don't know what I'm looking at. I concede. You beat me. Nicely played. Wow, I, I like love Omega now. We're not on here. You haven't paid your fine. What fine? Gambling's illegal in these parts. <laughs> Jerk. The law's the law. Now all you gotta do is pay the fine. Which is how much? How much? 10,000 credits. Unless you prefer to be arrested. Man, that is frustrating. Excellent. Consider your fine paid in full. Try and stay out of trouble. I, I like a nice subdued Imperial villain. Just unsettling. How many credits do we have left? 35,000. Enough for two tickets on the shuttle and a little extra. Well, Honestly, got enough, right? that's badass. We're liking this one because it's super fast paced. <laughs> Unlike the episode two. Cross here. Where's Betcha? <laughs> oh no. You looking for that hound? You know where she went? Sure do, but the answer's gonna cost you 10,000 credits. Why does everyone want exactly 10,000? I'm getting tired of this. Okay, okay. Five. Five is exactly how much they can give. That Imperial officer and his troopers snatched the creature and headed for the cargo docks. Down that way. Nice doing business with ya. Nice doing business with ya, governor. You heard him. Betches this way. And the spaceport is that way. Crosshair. We 
never would have escaped without Batcha. I'm not leaving her. You're making a mistake. You're not thinking clearly. Take the credit. If you want to go, then go. Find my own way. God, I love them together. I really do. Oh, and he has feelings now. What what great character progression. And I've only like kind of liked Novega this entire time, but from the first episode of this season, it's like I think, shot her up uh, so uh, much. There's for me. a lot of maturity in the character. Yeah. And it's I mean it was the same with Ezra. Ezra was not great in the first season of Rebels. Neither was Ahsoka. This crazy concept of characters growing up and not searching for treasure. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna find some treasure, Rekka. Fine. <laughs> Do this your way, but my skills are being wasted. Noted. And this journey with her is actually changing him, like the interactions they've had. Like he's had a lot of different things along the way that cause change, but this in particular is really cementing his direction. Yeah, it's strange. It's almost like in this episode four, he's found a new hope. Mm. Which crate is it? <laughs> that one. Interspecies connection is very important. Shouldn't we free the other animals too? Don't push it. That's why we get along so well. <laughs> <laughs> You're my favorite human, Greg. Thanks, brother. I thought you'd come searching for your mom. Unfortunately for you, Lau has a very strict pet policy. Lau. Lau is the name. 10,000 credits? No license means a hefty fine. How much this time? How about you give me all my money back? Credits won't do you any good when Hemlock shows up. Ruh -ruh. Oh, do you think I wouldn't piece it together when I found that crashed shuttle? It's like a Wallace and Gromit villain. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> yeah. I haven't even seen Wallace and Gromit, but I know the reference. Let's try cool. things your way. Different, different, different approach. <laughs> Shot and he's just like, oh. <laughs> All right. Jurassic Park, I'm so here for it. <laughs> oh, I love this. Oh my god. I'll handle this. Take Matcher and power up the ship. Aw. I feel like Crosshair's gonna get shot. Woo. Oh, uh oh. What is this? Oh my god, is it one from Force Awakens? The tentacles? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's get out of here? Yeah, I'm on it. I hope your takeoffs are better than your landings. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, that sword trooper looks cool. And then all of a sudden, you ever get yeeted? <laughs> so we have confirmation. The girl and CT9904 were in the space pool. Oh, someone's gonna be mad. I don't understand. How did they get away? <laughs> the Empire will be able to track this vessel. I'm heading to a remote location. They sent a coded transmission for Hunter and Wrecker to meet us there. Aww. Omega, it's been months. You don't know if they're still alive. They'll be there. Hope. At least Disney really gave them money to throw down for the final season. Sound design and animation. All of it. It's been top, top notch. notch. Four well, episodes it, it in a row. Well, it helps that Dave Filoni got the big promotion. Chief creative officer. <gasps> Yay. Now there's a sign. Rika. You can't say sore eyes because he only has one. I wasn't even sure your message was real. <laughs> Rika. Hunter's wiping his tears right now. <laughs> He's getting it all out in the vehicle. <laughs> Across the galaxy four times looking for you. Aw, he was crying. Five. But you're the one who found us. Aw. <laughs> this is great. This is such a good episode. <laughs> I really like this a lot. Oh, God, I can't believe how much feelings I'm feeling. We missed you, kid. We never stopped searching. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> How did you escape? I had help. His first words are going to be worse tech. He must know. Yeah, no, he probably does. <laughs> Ooh. 
I really dug that a lot. That was pure magic. In the midst of movie and TV show reactions, Liam, it's such a busy schedule around here. Who's got time to prep gourmet meals? Well, that's where Factor steps in. Factor is a game changer, delivering chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals right to your door. It's not just about dinner. They've got your whole day covered with snacks, smoothies, and more. Whether you're into keto, vegan, pescatarian like myself, or just looking for something delicious and healthy, Factor has a variety of meals ready in two minutes flat. Imagine the luxury of gourmet meals without the hassle of prep or cleanup. It's like your personal chef making it easier to eat well amid our busy lives. And the best part, Factor's flexible to fit any schedule. Pick from 6 to 18 meals weekly, adjusting or pausing anytime life gets in the way. It's about making your life easier, giving you control and convenience without compromising on quality. With Factor's Gourmet Plus, even my hectic days get a gourmet touch. No more grocery runs, just pure deliciousness. So you ready to elevate your food game reject nation? Jump into factor75.com or click below with Real Rejects 50. You're in for a 50% off treat on your first box. Supporting them helps support the channel, but also supporting your health and time. Dive into the gourmet life, people. Of course, Dave Filoni himself. I I love him. It's created by. We don't know who directed it. Let's find out who directed it so we can give credit to the proper people. Well... He was there. Saul. 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 <laughs> Saul. <laughs> well, Saul. Uh, Saul. What, was, what was his last name? We both, Ruiz? We both went right for Saul. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say his name is Saul. It's it's the same. Guess- it's just a different approach to the name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, these guys were great. Saul. Saul. And Israel. Saul. I'm, I'm going for Saul. Final vote. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> Leave it in the comments. Saul or Saul? Yeah, it's either that or those are three very Jewish names. Uh, or Latino. Well, that's what I'm saying. It could go either. Could go either way. <sighs> that was a great episode. That was a surprisingly great episode. Yeah, but it it underscores exactly what we've been saying, which is. The chemistry between those two characters, the growth, it's just freaking magic. Um, I yeah. think to call it a different approach is is neat when there's like familiarity of plot points here of like Star Wars, you know, our 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 heroes, uh, unlikely duo, misfits having to work together. Oh, to they're the, the empire, empire. Yeah. <laughs> and and they 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 give like little shades of different touches. They got a bit of an inglorious bastards approach. You got this sophisticated empire general guy who has a different way of rooting out bad people. But it's like it's kind of like a gangster, mm. you know, like taxing people uh, and yeah. the streets. And well, it, it has that space western feel that we love. Uh, it just the world feels very lived in and it's dark and gritty and um and honestly i think that's been one of my favorite parts of of bad batch is applying like the clone wars art style but to this like imperial era of mm. like the world is kind of garbage with uh, this like foreboding element yeah, a exactly. constant pall exactly. over it yeah um well, but well for me it always keeps coming back though to uh um omega and and Crosshair is yeah. their chemistry. The the char- those two characters in particular could not be more different. And because of the recent experiences that have shaped them and how they had to rely on each other to get out of it, like they've kind of teased this happening for them in some capacity for for a while now. But I was just finding myself enjoying it, mm. even when they weren't talking. Just like them exchanging looks, having to make decisions, things that. And, and a lot, it might not be like the most high stakes episode. Uh, I cared though. Like that yeah. was such the surprising part about it. I was, yeah. like, I was, I was so invested in what was happening. Well, even it's, though it's a big turning point yeah. episode. I mean, they could have really played out them not reconnecting with the rest of the batch right. until you know the very end. Um, but I, I felt like for a four episode arc in trying to escape, uh, it was great. It had a lot of oomph to it. Mm-hmm. I love the tone. I love the, you have these two really distinct characters, each of whom I think represent like on one side, you have somebody who's been so jaded by war, by the process, by being a reject, you know, and then you have someone on the opposite end who is just this 
relentless optimist who has had that worldview challenged, you know, first by losing tech and losing Camino and then by being imprisoned and literally used as a test subject. Yeah. Um, and yet, you know, the two of them, I think, have been able to find something in the middle, um, which uh, I, I, it's going to sound cliche being Star Wars. But like, I think that's one of my favorite uh, overarching concepts of Star Wars is this idea of balance and, um, yeah. you know, uh, Very true. them finding that balance in a way that does not incorporate the force, you know, that that is just the human experience. Um, but yeah, I'm like so jazzed. I'm also so happy because now I feel like there's such a, a broad canvas for them to focus on. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I know we all have ambitions for like the clone rebellion because, you know, we haven't seen uh, uh, Echo uh, in quite a while. Um, and we know that he's with Rex and, you know, maybe some of our other clone friends. So I'm curious if that's how all of this comes to a, a, a conclusion. Um, I have no idea. But for what the journey is right now, beyond the, I, I'm so surprised by how I was like, like, yeah, I mean, we're going to cover it, but I, I haven't really been itching to watch it. Even mm -hmm. before we film, I was like, yeah, let's put on the Bad Batch. Yeah. It's like such a lukewarm go feeling when we go in. And then we ended up really being like swept up at episode one and three. And this one, and they're so contained with their characters. Yeah. And, even with Omega, watching her with the gambling scene, <laughs> it really hit me in that moment. Like, I love Omega now. Yeah. And before I didn't. And watch, I was glad they didn't go like, oh, M count. Now I can use force ability all of a sudden, even though she's not aware of this M count. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was just her no, skills, her skill. approach, her cadence, uh, everything about the way she carries herself now. Yeah. And I love that evolution. And, and, and I hope that. I imagine she'll live by the end of this season. Otherwise, that would really suck. Because uh, I was like, oh, man, I found myself going, it would be cool to see her in live action. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it, it's becoming like really easy to imagine a live action scenario. Mm -hmm. And this is maybe just like the fangirl in me talking where you have live action Ezra. Girls don't like Star Wars. There was a psychologist who interviewed, who was interviewed by a very famous Star Wars person. Mm, wow. and, and the psychologist I happen to know a lot of said, women Star Wars the psychologist, fans disagree. Woman, woman, psychologist, psychologist fake news Greg. the psychology woman said women don't like Star Wars girls don't like listen uh, so I no girls like Star Wars I would I would pay good money to watch Ashley Eckstein kick your ass right now Greg girls don't like Star Wars according to the psychologist <laughs> <laughs> anyway a live action Ezra, a live action Omega, a, a live action Asajj Ventress, a live action um, uh, Cal Kestis. And they all team up together to fight Cal Kestis, who's a bad guy now. Mm. No. All the women come together. That's to a bad guy. Ezra's not a woman. Did oh, and Sabine, Ezra? I guess. No. I did say Ezra. Oh. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I think it's, you have this kind of like interesting motley crew of like non overpowered could, should it be Jedi sort of characters um, uh, who are all going to be alive and around the same age at the same point. Um, and I think that leaves you like some ripe storytelling True. in the fall of the empire period. If they all make it that long. Um, unclear. Well, we're here at a good point, and I'm excited that Crosshair's with them. I imagine Crosshair will really earn his way into gaining the trust. I think he's going to have a sacrifice. My, that's my prediction. Sacrifice. I, I, I think a sacrifice will be necessary. Solid sacrifice to show his growth. Or, 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 or Hunter dies and, and Crosshair leads the batch. And I was gonna, I, and I would be okay with that. In a, or Wrecker leads the batch, the true brains of the operation. <laughs> Which one of the batch would you be okay with getting killed off? I mean, this can be a hot take, but all of them. You're okay I, with all of them? I would be okay if all of them make a sacrifice that allows Omega to continue on. Because ultimately, they're aging at twice the rate anyway. Mm. They're in the prime of their lives. They're about to be the senior citizen batch, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think for Omega to 
The old batch. The old batch. I would watch the shit out of that. gonna get Wrecker, put in your teeth. Um, <laughs> My knees can't handle hyperspace. <laughs> <laughs> I can't carry the big minigun no more. <laughs> and I hate it. Uh, <laughs> T. Bradley Baker, if you're ever like in need of a day off, hit us up. We can do it. He records a whole season in a day. No, of course. He, I don't even think that he... I think he just reads the scripts anymore. I think he just knows the lines. I think he just has recorded the dictionary. (laughs) (laughs) And they just take his words and put it in his head. Well, I mean, that's what they've they've done with with Vader. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why AI is good. That's why we should embrace AI. Mm -hmm. Um, How can we fear AI when Star Wars deals so much with AI? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not like, you know, an army of droids or anything led to the giant galactic civil war that ultimately allowed for democracy to be But overthrown. that's what has led to robophobia. I've come coined that word. Robophobia? You did not coin that word. Coin right? it. I coined you, that nope. word. <laughs> yeah, it's not you, Robophobia. I created yeah. it right now. It's, it's yeah. a word. No one's ever made it up before. I mean, it's Ro- it's not hard to imagine not being allowed to bring your robot into a bar in our near future. Robophobia. I don't think anyone's ever said that. You're not the first person to say that. I'm pretty sure I am. Hey, uh, Reject Nation... Do a quick Google search. If Greg was the first one to do it, give him I'm praise. I'm pretty sure. I don't need a Google clip. I you don't need to Google I it because then you'll be proven living wrong. Living in this reality is where I find fulfillment, and <laughs> I don't fulfillment <laughs> where there's no Google to fact check you. <laughs> Google is a bunch of lies and agendas. Well, you can't spell Google without lie. I think I I can't Google that it, so there's could no be way to a know. lie, which is the <laughs> ultimate Google. <laughs> uh, well, Reject Nation, what did you think? I know that you all think that when the episode doesn't have like a lot of jam packed action, that Greg and I are thoroughly disinterested. Uh, <laughs> yeah. However, I think this episode proves that like strong writing, strong character development. I'm just happy to be along for the ride. And I love, are you Googling, Greg? Oh, someone else came up with this. Are you on Ask Jeeves? Oh, it's even on fandom. From what year? According to the book, a ham- the book Phobia is a handbook of theory and treatment published by Wiley Coyote. How with you, <laughs> Wiley Coyote? Why don't you just screw you? Just, you. Get, just get beat by Wiley Coyote? Robo symptom can have symptoms including ability to think, sweating, lightheadedness, headache, trembling, rapid heart rate, increased mm. blood pressure, fainting, nausea, choking sensation. Chest tightness. Gosh, do you guys I have would, robophobia? You guys would not survive. <laughs> <laughs> you will not survive what's going to happen in the next, next uh, like, like two days, guys. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, well, I got to say, this was my favorite episode of Dune yet. Um, People are going to be tweeting saying, I'm working on my robo. I'm, I need to take a break to, to help me work on my robophobia. <laughs> So funny. There's yeah. someone in the comments using machines to type to me right now. Don't make fun of my robophobia. <laughs> I was gonna say, if anybody out there is experiencing robophobia, I'm sorry that Greg belittled and <laughs> delegitimized your your very real phobia that I told you existed. There's anyway, some <laughs> form of robot <laughs> that you are using to type to me. Yeah. Well, robots a broad definition. I know. That's what I mean. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, no, Michael, I'm not going to let you end this, man. No, you've, tried, you've tried for like three minutes now. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> I just want to go home. <laughs> I want to hang out with Batcher, my my dog. Oh, I should rename my dog after rename Badger. Dog? Oh. It's Batcher. Batcher. Did not, I have, you said Badger. I didn't say Badger. You said Badger. I, I didn't enunciate. There's a difference. No, I heard the Badger. I, I saw your mouth and heard it in my ear. Mm. Badger is what you said. Yeah. People in the comments say our mics are too close to our face. That's not true at all. But for me, I'm like, I'd pay extra for that. You're little, right. Little Greg Let's put Alba. Put them further away. Does this A-S- sound better, guys? AMR? ASMR? <laughs> A-S- They're super directional. Are they super directional? Yeah. I gotta put it like that. You can barely hear me. Like that. I like that. It goes away. Hello. So, like, I guess robophobia. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. <laughs> 
So that's when you fear robots, not when you're racist towards robots. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. Like arachnophobia. But if you're a robophobic. Yeah, yeah, if you're robophobic. Then you're a, ro- a robo-racist. Ro- ro- robo-racist. Robo-racist. That's, go, go, robo-racist. That's in my, robo- in my RoboCop remake, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, God. I am here even, looking for robo-racist. Don't, don't even get me started on RoboCop <laughs> racist. Okay. Robo-racist. Oh, jeez. All right, see you next week. <laughs>